Today I want to tell you guys a little bit a uh, story about me and how I started out as a jQuery user and I ventured out into the wider world of JavaScript. <coughs> the reason I want to talk about the story is because when we were discussing what we were going to do for this month on the uh, organizers mailing list, Ben posted a story to the list that confronted a recent controversy and that controversy are J jQuery users fools? So the article's three main points, and the, let me back up a little bit. The argument uh, that is made is that the people who use jQuery aren't real programmers. Uh, they're just designers fiddling around in JavaScript. They don't really understand what they're doing, so on and so forth. And so the article's three main points were, first off, before jQuery came along, when a lot of people said that they didn't like JavaScript, what they actually meant was they really didn't like the DOM API. And then once jQuery came along, it abstracted away the problems with the DOM API and all the things that caused people pain. And so as a result, jQuery actually introduces people to the beauty of JavaScript by uh, preventing them from having to deal with the pain of the DOM. And there's one quote in the article that I really liked, and it said, I view jQuery as bait. Hold it over the user's head, get them really excited by it, and then when they feel ready, they almost always move on to learning vanilla JavaScript. And I like that because that almost perfectly described my journey beginning as a jQuery user and moving on to a full-fledged JavaScript developer. So let's talk about the start of the journey. Um, my journey began with jQuery began back when, and this, honestly, I don't remember this, but this is Dave Bronsman's favorite story to tell about this, but uh, uh, when I told Dave about jQuery, the top hit in Google was um, a Java XML parsing tool called jQuery. So jQuery was still relatively small at that point, but I was very excited about it because it let me do things that I would have been afraid to try before. So after a number of years of developing with jQuery, I began to want to try something a little bit more. And at this particular time, I was working on a one-page website, very simple, a small audience, and I wanted a calendar widget in it that would show a list of upcoming events uh, pulled from a Google calendar specifically. I wanted it tightly integrated with the site's minimalist look, and I thought Google's own embedded agenda widget looked terrible. I wanted mine to look a little bit more like this, a little bit cleaner, a little bit more readable, not that Google blue surrounding it. And I wanted it to just show the upcoming week, whereas Google's will, will just show you like how many other days they wanted to show you. So as a result, I ended up rolling on my sleeves and writing my own JavaScript widget called Upcoming JS. And along the way, I learned some things about moving from being a jQuery user to a JavaScript develop developer. So we're gonna talk about those today. The first thing was to embrace constraints. So when I started on this project, I'm working on a single page website and I wanted to keep the JavaScript minimal because I had only one HTML page to load. So I wanted to try without relying on external libraries, third-party libraries. Uh, could I do it just using plain old JavaScript? And it was a way to push myself and to learn. So I'm gonna do a, a brief tangent here. One of the really cool things going on in the JavaScript world right now is server-side JavaScript on uh, stuff like Node.js using frameworks like Backbone. And what's really neat about that is that you get to do JavaScript with 80% less DOM. Uh, you know, you're still gonna have to write stuff that runs in the client, it is a web application, but you get to do all the server-side logic that doesn't even have to worry about uh, browser incompatibility. So if you've got a project where that is the right tool for the job, then it's a great opportunity to kind of move out of the, uh, the just the jQuery realm and start to learn more about JavaScript itself. So then the second thing is DIY shortcuts. And this kind of goes to what Carl was talking about earlier. One of the first things you're gonna miss if you try to write a project with a jQuery is shortcuts for selecting the DOM elements that you want. But before 
jQuery came along and gave us this awesome CSS selector engine, which was in turn based on stuff done by Dean Edwards. You know, dollar, the dollar sign was just a, a pointer to document.getElementById. So there are ways that you can ease, one of the pains with the DOM API is that it's incredibly verbose. And you can ease your, your pain a little bit by setting up your own shortcuts to some of these commonly used functions. And then the last thing is to steal shamelessly. Uh, and what I mean by that is that a lot of the pain points in JavaScript development, uh, things like um, event handling, which is the DOM API, and um, dates, which is a weakness in JavaScript itself, these are all things that really smart people solved even before jQuery came along. And you can pull that code into your own project because most of the most of these are floating around as blog posts or open source code snippets. And the side benefit is that you can learn from the ways that they solve these problems. Um, you, I would recommend people like uh, John Resick, the guy who, who started jQuery, uh, Dean Edwards, who wrote the, the CSS selector engine that formed the basis for jQuery's magic, uh, Peter Paul Koch, who runs a, a website called uh, browser or quirksmode.org, and he documents a lot of the places where different browsers handle things differently. He also provides code with, okay, here's how they do things differently, here's the code that you can make them all behave the same way. And the cool thing is that you can look over their, their solutions and learn stuff about JavaScript that you never knew it could do. So when I was writing my, um, my upcoming JS, one of the things I want to include was an HTML templating engine so that you could take uh, HTML, give it to upcoming JS and say, this is how I want to format my upcoming events. And John Ratzig actually wrote a micro templating engine uh, that does some crazy JavaScript voodoo. And it probably took me a good week to untangle it and figure out what each piece does. But I, I learned a lot of stuff about how JavaScript works. In fact, if you look through the code of upcoming JS, you'll see a lot of comments like this. I took this from Mozilla, I took this from Mood Tools, I took this from Dean Edwards. So, like I said, steal shamelessly. So, now we're at the point in the story where we come back to the beginning. We find we're back at home again. And for us, that's jQuery. We've, we've gone out, we've looked at some ways to kind of venture outside of jQuery into JavaScript, and now we're back to jQuery again. Um, when I finished upcoming JS, I realized towards the end that I could add just a few lines of code to it and turn it into a jQuery plugin. I just put a, a conditional statement, if window.jQuery, then turn it into a jQuery plugin, and I had the best of both worlds. I had a plugin, a uh, JavaScript module that could run completely independently of, job, of jQuery, but if it was there, it could function as a jQuery plugin uh, happily along with the rest of the jQuery ecosystem. And I found that uh, learning JavaScript actually made me a better jQuery developer. And probably the best example of that is a uh, presentation that Zach Dennis, I don't know if he's here tonight, but uh, he did this last March. This is an excellent presentation. If you're interested in learning more about JavaScript, I'd recommend bookmarking it and going through it. And uh, if we ever do a greatest hits of GR Web Dev, my vote would be for this presentation. Um, he really does a good job of demonstrating in his code how JavaScript savvy combines with jQuery ease of use to create some really clean, um, maintainable code. So are there any questions? This is a uh, very quick overview, but uh, hopefully it will give you guys some places to start in your own investigations into JavaScript. So Someone that's looking into really learning both jQuery and JavaScript, where do you suggest that they start? I'm going to, to send some links out to the mailing list. 
but uh, there are some excellent JavaScript oriented mailing developer mailing lists where honestly this, a lot of the discussions going on on those mailing lists are over my head, but by kind of challenging myself to, to follow these discussions and to uh, figure out what it is that they're talking about, um, I've learned quite a bit about JavaScript. So like I said, I will send it out to the GR Web Dev mailing list afterwards uh, with additional links. Now I've already mentioned uh, people like Dean Edwards and Peter Paul uh, Koch um, reading their websites and so I'll include that in the, the list of links. When you converted this into a jQuery plugin, did you um, did you then go and refactor and use um, use the benefits of, of jQuery in your plugin, or is it just is it just one? Is your jQuery plugin smaller than than your full uh, mm -hmm. library or not? Yeah, no, I didn't go back and, and refactor it to use jQuery in other parts. So it's just one. I think it's like a five-line block of code at the end that turns it into a jQuery plugin, but the rest of it is completely jQuery-free. And there are, are plenty of places that would have benefited from jQuery. Like I said, I had to pull in. I pulled in um, Dean Edwards' event or handler stuff. Mm -hmm. So I cheated a little bit in that I don't have an external dependency, but I have this code kind of um, glued into my library that is essentially doing the same thing. So. All right, so there are three things that I want you guys to walk away from. Embrace constraints, you know, try something where you don't use any third-party external dependencies. Uh, create your own shortcuts to, to ease some of your own pain. And uh, steal shamelessly from the, the uh, gurus out there. And that's it.